There's two, there's four, there's six and eight. Shunting, rolling stock, and hauling freight. Red, green, yellow, orange, purple, brown, blue, they're the really useful crew. That's who, all with different roles to play around Tidmouth Sheds and far away. Down Gordon's Hill and around some bends, we got Thomas and his friends. The Peel Godred Branch Line. Such a unique and interesting location. It's where Henry had his accident with the Flying Kipper. It also has a waste dump where whiff and scruff work. And part of the line reaches up to a mountain railway, the Coldy Fell Railway. But what if I told you that back in 1961, part of the line was electric? Long ago, there were three electric engines that ran on the Peel Godred line. A BR Class 86, BR Class 87, and an electric multiple unit. Unfortunately, between the late 20th and early 21st centuries, the electric engines had officially retired. It wasn't until 2012 where Sir Stephen Topham had purchased a battery-powered electric engine, Stafford. Stephen's son, Richard, thought that Stafford felt lonely, so he thought about restoring the electric line and purchasing a new engine that's electric. We're going to examine some of the old hanging wires near Kilting. Thomas was ordered to pick up Ruth and Delilah and make their way to inspect the wires on the Peel Godred line. As they arrived, Ruth noticed something in the distance. Oh my! Look! In the distance! That looks like the Stonehenge! Oh wow! I never noticed that! What a view! Indeed. While it is a cool view, there's more to that landmark than you two think. And Delilah explained that centuries ago, the standing stones used to be a ritual where a cult worshipped the devil himself. Play the forbidden note! <gasps> It's not possible! That sounds terrifying! Now then, it appears the wires are quite old, worn, and haven't emitted electricity for a long time. So Sir Topham had purchased some new hanging wires, and the shipment was due to be delivered to Brendam Docks. I don't believe it. Can you believe what this reboot has to offer? It even has me. <sighs> Honestly, I'm still not impressed. Well then, simply don't watch the reboot then. It's very simple. If you stop watching bad shows, then they'll stop making bad shows. There'll be another ship coming in. But we already have some boats taking up the dock space already. And Porter was right. 
The docks were already very busy as it is. At last, the dock manager came to sort out the issue. Sorry, Captain. You might have to wait until outside the dock. Captain, let's just wait outside the docks. As the crew was about to head back to the open ocean, the captain noticed the canal beside the cranes. Oi, crewmates, why don't we wait beside the canal? Are you sure that's a good idea? The dock manager said to wait for the tugboats to take us in. Do it! I want this delivery done in time! Without any hesitation, the crewmates got to work and set course into the canal. Hey, isn't that the same ship? Wait, that ship should be nowhere near the canal! Stop that ship! Stop! Abort! Abort! Get out of the canal now! Captain, it looks like people down there are trying to stop us. Just ignore them. Hey, hey, hey! Watch the bow! Watch the bow! Watch the bow! No! Oh no! Oh no! With a final scraping groan, the ship grounded to a halt. Wedged within the canal. Yeah, why'd you do that? If you intend to go through the canal, that was meant for smaller boats. Thank you, Captain. Not only did you manage to keep boats out of the canal, but also trap some in. I told you to wait outside the docks, and then some tugboats will pull you in when you're ready for you. That is law. <sighs> Told you we should have waited. Shut the sod up! We have to free the ship. Rockstar's coming in four days. Well then, we better get to it. Sir Topham had received the news from the dock manager, and he was very cross. The first thing he did was getting Harold to bring a photographer with him and taking a bird's eye view picture of the canal blockage. After examination, he devised an idea. Diesel 10 and Oliver fitted with a jackhammer is going to loosen some concrete on the stern and the bow. And then once the ship is loose, tugboats will pull it back out into sea. It wasn't easy, and it wasn't any better since they're on a time schedule. Oh my giddy aunt! Cinders and ashes! What happened here? Some idiotic captain veered his ship into the canal, and now it's wedged there. So now we are trying to free this oceanic behemoth by listening the concrete a bit. Oh, hello Elizabeth. Been a while since I saw you here. So, I remember coming here with the puddings after you saved me from the snow. Now, I'm here taking out concrete. Honestly, humanity's probably nothing more but a mistake on this planet. Well, remember, we wouldn't exist if it weren't for humans. And everybody makes mistakes every now and then. Also, I really like your claw. So useful and unique. Oh, really? You actually think Pinch? Well, uh, thank you. Three days have passed, and Percy and Patrick arrived in time to see the ship leave. So, what's this I'm hearing? A ship blocking a canal. That is hard to believe. I guess it was hard to believe, but that happened. They watched as the tugboats hauled it away. There she blows! Well, now I've seen everything. At ease, Oliver. Important concrete coming through. All set with your delivery, Percy. Thanks, Salty. Percy got the wires and made his way to the Pilgodrid branch. <laughs> Nice work, Percy. Now Ruth and Delilah will restore the electric line. Electric line? So does that mean Kenji's coming back to- Maybe. And that reminded me. I promised Hiro to see him and Kenji in Japan again. Ah, in that case, 
son Kenji, then who else could run the electric part of the Heel God Trip line? Well then, I guess that's for all of us to find out in the future, isn't it?